Hello and welcome to this week's ECS Golf Review. Now, followers of the channel will understand that this is actually a couple days early. Normally my reviews come out on the Sunday. This one in the UK anyway is coming out on the Friday. Next week's one as well will be coming out on the Friday. The reason for this is this week, um, either over the weekend or possibly beginning of next week, I have another what's in the bag for you. Now there's been a lot of changes since the last time. And this is because next weekend, for the reason why the video is coming out on the Friday night over the weekend, I am actually playing the first Putting Kings tournament of the year, which is the sort of society group that I'm in, where we're going down to a place just south of Godalming, I believe, uh, one round on the Saturday to decide who wins, uh, gets a nice trophy, and then a game on the Sunday where we're doing sort of Ryder Cup style, just for a bit of fun. So... I will let you know the results and how I did in that afterwards. Now, let's get into this review. So, the club we are reviewing today, or I should say clubs because it's a set, is this. There we go. The MG2 TaylorMade. Now, I anyone who's watched my show before and what's in my bag as well will know that I actually used to have just a very random set of wedges so i had a rtx3 i believe it might be might have been a four um the wedge i had this cbx cleveland sound wedge and then i had a ping glide forge 52 gap wedge now nothing wrong with that i personally think if the wedges work for you then you don't necessarily need a set i mean they work for me and they were great but obviously with this channel and trying new equipment i wanted to see get a set and then see if they would make it in my bag. So this is the set I went for. I've got, here it is, I've got a 60 degree there. That's my 50 degree. I wanted to reduce it because of the gap now between my pitching wedge and my gap wedge. So I wanted a 50 over 52. And then in the black, which is very nice, I've got the, basically the sound wedge of 56. Now, I will explain why at the end of this video, why I've gone down the TaylorMade MG2 route. And obviously, as always, we will have a look at the clubs. Um, I'll talk about all the technology in them. Then, rather than actually take them to the range, I'll show you some footage me with, me, with them out on the course, discuss with you why I like and what the feel, et cetera, about them is. And then, obviously, I will go through distance as well. But for me, wedges, distance isn't exactly too important because a lot of them are really see if you're going to go the same way i mean if you want to change the distance you just change the loft really so that's pretty you know distance to distance really when it comes down to wedges for me and then obviously we'll discuss also if they go in the bag which i will say straight away they are but why i put them in the bag and if i should suggest them for you guys so first thing as always let's have a closer look at the clubs So there you go, beautiful clubs. I mean, obviously, if you go for the chrome like this, or the black satin, I'm pretty sure I've got that the right way around this time. A second ago, which you will not see, I called that the satin. Um, so there you go, beautiful clubs. Now, I will just say at the end of this video as well, and something I'm bringing into all my videos now with my golf reviews, obviously secondhand clubs or new clubs, is the ACS golf scale. <laughs> so basically, I've got five categories. We've got distance, Feel, looks, price, and forgiveness. I'll give them a range between one and five, five being the best, one being the lowest. And then at the end of the year, what we'll do is I'll go through all the clubs and then I'll give you the best in category, what I have found throughout the year. So there you go. Now, let's delve straight into the technology part of this. Rather than me trying to remember it all off my head, I shall read you off all the technology that is in these beautiful i would say very beautiful wedges so first thing we need to discuss is the cnc milling that we have on the bottom of the sole here there you go now you have them on all these clubs and we will discuss that in a little bit more detail in a second but basically the idea of it is to help 
with turf interaction is to help the club obviously get through the turf, get through the wet grass, get through the sand, for example, because let's be honest, when it comes down to wedges, you're not just a normal island, not just off the fairway, anywhere around that green, you're going to be picking up one of these. So that's obviously there to help. And then, then we move into the raw, which is one of the key bits of this club, and that's the raw face. So there you go. There's a raw face there. So I'm a massive fan of raw clubs when it comes down to wedges. I just think, you know, it gives that little bit more feel like you think you're going to get more spin. Not necessarily so, but it does. And so with these, they have a raw face. You buy them new, you have a sticker over there and you take it off. Now they've kept that going for the MG3, which is now the new year. This has came out in 2019. Um, so the brand new one that they just released is the same as well as a sticker, which is really a cool bit. Just talking even more into that, you know, it's raw finish face, which feels rough to touch and is designed to add friction as the ball hits the face, optimising spin and producing a more consistent, stable flight to, thanks to less skid. Again, obviously, when it comes, you're going to be hitting this out wet grass etc so what you want is you want to be as consistent as possible because you don't want to be suddenly hitting a shot and it flies out or it's low spin hits that green and just keeps on going you know you want it to bite so it hits the green and it stops easier said than done but that's the idea now moving on the reason for it also on top of this you have sharper deeper and narrow raw ztp grooves compared to the original mill grind. And this combine, combines with laser etching in between each groove for more aggressive face. Okay, now again, that's the idea to give more grip, more control, so that ball really bites and you get that spin level that you need. And then obviously I mentioned the CNC mill on the back. They've streamlined the look of it from the previous model. I mean, how much does that actually help? Who knows? I just think it looks really nice. <laughs> and then you've also got this. So you've got a TPU insert, which is just here. There you go, in all the clubs. TPU insert placed into the back cavity, you know, is a, ooh, it's got a very important role, it says here, is to remove a little weight from behind the head to allow for a thicker face as providing vibration dampening, which adds up a better sound and feel the impact. And that's another thing that's really important when it comes down to wedges. It's not necessarily, like I've said, it's not about the distance, it's about the feel. You know, you need a really good feeling wedge just to control the distance of it. If, if it's rock hard, you know, it'd be very difficult to control how far you need to hit it, how hard you need to hit it with, you know, a good feeling wedge, then in time you can learn, all right, I just need to tap this. I know exactly how much I need to do by the feedback of the club, and that's what's really important. So, so there you go. That's all the technology that's surprisingly crammed in quite a little thing here, which is great. So let's now just get down to the course, as I mentioned before. I'll discuss about the feel of the club, you know, talk about the distance as well overall. And then, yeah, and then we'll head back here and we'll discuss why it's in my bag. Go through the ACS range, golf range, as I just discussed. And if I think it's a good idea for you guys to pick up. So here we are down on the course. It is for me, as I've said, you know, and we'll always say for me, it's just more about the feel when it comes down to these wedges. And these are the type of shots where I really sort of do. And I had the 56 in hand here. Normally I use a 50, but at the current time of this, I didn't actually have the 50. <laughs> so I was doing that. And one thing I would say is I really did enjoy the feel of it. I knew, obviously, this is the first time I've used these wedges. I knew that how much more force I need to do to get it to go that little bit further or how little less. You know, it felt really nice off the face. And also it felt like it did bite a lot. Um, one thing I will say about this face, though, because it is quite rough, especially out the sand, you can really scratch your balls up quite quickly, um, especially if you use the cheap balls, um, which I do every now and again as well, because obviously you don't want to be losing balls that cost about two, three, four pounds in the woods. So, <laughs> always sometimes the cheap ones are a good one. But, you know, relatively speaking, I was really happy with it, you know, I was happy getting out of the sand, you can really open up the face 
to get it out now with this cover we'll say it's not a full face one I'm in Cleveland now doing a full face high toe Taylor May do full face I think Mac Daddy now Callaway do full face where you've got obviously grooves across the whole face which I think really makes their clubs a little bit more versatile because wherever you hit it on the face obviously you've got that grip there which these don't have but then you know you shouldn't really be aiming to hit it off the toe of a club anyway you should be aiming to hit it on the middle so really not the end of the world with it now on a full shot here as well I did there you go I did find you know it did exactly what I wanted to with distance I had 60 degrees so my lob wedge was 70 yards, which is exactly the same as my RTX. I used to have 56, was actually actually between 85 yards to sort of a 90. So really a little bit longer than my original one, my CBX Cleveland one I used to have, was around 80 yards on average. But I think that's probably down to the shaft. Um, the CBX was very much a web flex, while this one is actually a stiff shaft. And then my 50 degree, obviously being two more degrees more, than my ping was actually around so about 115 yards which currently from my bag works really well and this is actually on a different day this shot this is me down at Silvermere remembering that I can take footage for you guys <laughs> so that's why I took this one but yeah generally you know really happy with performance and yeah it's just great clubs so there we go now as mentioned before during that clip there now me on the golf course distances wise is what i want you know the lob ways with 70 yards carry you know maybe 71 distance if it comes if it goes forward or maybe a little bit back um in total distance but that's what i want the sandwich is a little bit more actually it's at 85 um last one where the cbx was actually 80 but that was with a web flex shaft and now i've got a stiff shaft so 85 maybe pushing to 90 in between that i'm relatively happy with that again that fits in quite well and then the gap which i've got in my hand here 50 that 100 115 um total yards distance um on average now that's fine really it is quite a big jump up from the sandwich but for me at the moment in the bag um i've actually got a 44 pitching wedge which probably goes about 130 ish um when we did a review of those clubs i will go into the figures there so for me i wanted the 50 i knew there's going to be a little bit of gap between my sandwich but at the moment that works i'm happy with that and then obviously as a golfer which one thing we need to do is i will try and control my distances with it which is the whole point of the wedges now <clears throat> excuse me now going into the feel of the club i think it feels fantastic it's really great you know, I really do appreciate the soft touch of it as well. It doesn't feel that hard off the face. It feels relatively quite soft, which means I can really gauge in my chipping onto the green, which is perfect for me. Because let's be honest, being sort of mid to high handicapper, I'm not too worried about the spin numbers for me. You know, all I want is a thing to bite on there. You know, I'm not going to be hitting that ball full pelt and then getting backspin off it now. A lot of you guys watching this are probably the same. You know, you just want the club, make sure that you can get it on there and it relatively sticks. You're not worried about spinning the ball back yet because in the end of the day, you really have to progress to get that. I've done it before on the golf course, but it's a very rare shot for me and it's not something that I aim to do. Um, if you're watching this and you're, you know, a really low handicapper and everything like that, then yes, I completely understand why you would want to do that. Um talking going into now obviously the distance as i said that's fine we've said we mentioned feel um talking about forgiveness now when it comes down to wedge it's a bit of a weird thing to say about forgiveness for me you're hitting your lower club so technically obviously it's just you're close to the ball because it's a smaller club and relatively speaking you're not bashing your driver which is a big face and you can hit it all over the place um Forgiveness, I think, relatively, if we do go look down that route, forgiveness, is, I think, is quite good, but I don't think it's the best. So if you possibly wanted something more forgiving, then obviously you've got the Cleveland CBX range, um, the CBX1 or the CBX2, which is the newer one out, and I think they've now got CBX full face as well. 
you know, chunkier sole, bigger cavity back at the back, thicker top line. That's more forgiving if you hit it across the face. And then TaylorMade, you've got the high toe as well, which is sort of their, their more forgiving model as well. So forgiveness-wise, it's good. But if you really struggle with hitting any irons, any wedges, it's not the most forgiving there. I mean, in the end of the day, it is sort of more a tour show wedge. I mean, if you looked at a lot of the pros, they had these in a the bag. Tiger Wood had his own branded one, the TW one, which you can actually pick up. Um, you know, look at other YouTubers out there, Rick Shields. Rick Shields had these in the bag. So not the most forgiving, but not bad. Pretty good, I think pretty standard for a wedge. Obviously got a little bit of sort of cavity back there. Now, let's go in to the price of this. Now, this is the reason why I've actually picked these up. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I have to say why I've actually picked these clubs up and it's because of the price. Now, it's not the price that you would go to. Let's put that down while I'm waving it around in your face. Now, it's not the price that you go to a shop to get. So now if you went to, say, over here in the UK, you went to Golf Bidder or, um, you know, Golf Clubs for Cash or if you're in America and you go to places like, I believe, like Replay Golf or even go down to, you know, PGA places and they've got secondhand clubs in there, etc. The price of these is relatively, still speaking, in the price of a lot of other things around that 2019 mark. So your Vokies, um, your RTXs from Cleveland. The Cleveland RTX is actually over here in the UK, a little bit cheaper of the same model the same year. Um, obviously, your Callaway Mac Daddies, um, your Pings, for example. Now, you know, Mac Daddies are actually, again, I think the model around this year was, again, a little, a little bit cheaper. But it's not that, you know, if you do look in the store, I mean, the prices over here in the UK anyway are around, they range, to be fair. And Golf Bidder, for example, I've seen them for like £60, which is... $71 for anyone over in the US, um, and then all the way up to £91, which is a brand new one, um, to, which is $108 in the US, which to be fair, £91 for brand new, I, bought, I think it was pretty much brand new, isn't bad at all really. But the reason is, on eBay, they don't sell. So obviously if you have the fixed price and you wait there, etc., then maybe they will, but Relatively on eBay, if it's, this has been put on as an auction and they start with a low start price, you can pick these up for a great price. And this is the reason why I went down this route because I picked up this 50 degree, including delivery, for £41. You know, that's $49, pretty much brand spanking new. Absolutely love it. Got the 61, I actually got. I brought it from a shop that I actually got because I needed to finish the set, but I got 10% off. I think it was 10%, a little bit more off. So I actually got it for £60 right, with delivery. So that's $71. So again, not the end of the world. And then the 56 one, the black satin, again, pretty much brand new. Nothing wrong with it. In really good shape. Six, uh, £36. So about $43. And that's why... I think if you're looking for a new wedge set, keep your eye out on auction sites for these because they don't do well on auction sites, which I don't understand because I don't think people think about them. Obviously, when it comes down to wedges, you go down the Cleveland route or very much so at the moment, you go down that Vokey route, you go down the Titleist, which they're extremely popular at the moment, Vokey. So, so people are forgetting about them. And so when they go on the auction, they start off in a low price. They stayed with it and you get a really good deal. And that's why I picked them up. Now, let's go into my new ACS Golf scale and let's run through the figures out of five for my five categories for this club. Now, distance, as I said, it's not really a worry for me when it comes down to wedges. I don't think you should really be thinking about the distance. Obviously, it just comes down to what degree you loft you really have it. So, you know, you change the loft it gets your distance and range to make sure you have the correct gapping. So I put it as half 2.5 out of 5 because it does the distance I want, but I wasn't expecting it to suddenly fly out and go miles because I picked it those degrees per what I want for my gapping. So that was fine. The feel, out of 5, I've given it 4. I think it's a really nice feeling club. I really do. But I just can't give it 5 just yet. You know, it's one of those things, 
maybe it could be a little bit better. I mean, I think it's really nice and I feel lovely, but maybe a little bit better. So I don't want to give that a five. Um, looks, four, four out of five. I think it's gorgeous. Now, the only reason I haven't given it a five out of five is you can pick these up and there's sometimes flaws with them. So here, for example, the chrome might peel off to, to show the rust actually under here as well. So it looks a bit tatty. Um, and then you, I find on the sole here, you start getting a few rust spots, which is fine. Doesn't affect the club at all. But when it comes down to looks, it can start looking a little bit tatty. So that's why I've given it four and not a five. If they stayed like this, it'd be a five, believe me. Uh, price, I've given it a three out of five. The reason for a three out of five and not high is because, as I mentioned, if you get this in auction, it's an absolute bargain. If you don't get it in auction, you're pretty much paying for every, pretty much it's normal price for all wedge, really, across the board. So that's why it's a three. And forgiveness, again, I've given it a three. Like I've said, it's not the most forgiving, but yet, you know, for a wedgie, it is forgiving. Sorry, but there are obviously more forgiving options out there. As I've mentioned, obviously, you can go down, you know, the the CBX from Cleveland. You can do the uh, high toe um, here for TaylorMade. Or even you could do, like, get you know, if you've got yourself a really forgiving set of, you know, TaylorMade Sim clubs from before or, you know, Callaway Maverick for example, all the Rogue ST Max, etc. You know, they will actually have wedges specifically for that set. So you can get a sound wedge flat, you can get a pitching wedge flat, uh, sorry, a gap wedge flat, and there, you know, they will be very forgiving because that's the whole point of those clubs. So there you go. Now, just to finish off, who do I think can use them personally coming from me, a mid to high handicapper? I think anyone, to be honest. I think if you're, you know, if you're looking for a really lovely set of wedges, I think they're perfect to be honest and I think you can put them in the bag I don't think they're just aimed as those lower you know lower hand capillaries even if they go in tall bags as like I said you know wedges they're not really about forgiveness they are what they are you know there's, I mean, there's not really that huge amount of sort of forgiving models you know you when you hear a review of the wedges you don't hear forgiveness forgiveness but there are forgiving wedges out there. If you are a high handicapper or you really struggle with hitting it, then I would suggest the CBXs, I suggest going down that sort of sim route. And especially as well with CBX, to be honest, it's just a wider sole, just a bigger sole. So if you chunk the ball, you know, it really does help. So that. So there you go. There's my review of the MG2 TaylorMade, precisely the MG2. Point zero, that's what they call it. Tailor made, lovely club. If you get it on eBay in an auction, absolute bargain. And really happy with them in the bag, and they will be in the bag for the foreseeable future. So, if you like this video, please do give it a like. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Really increased late recently with subscriptions, which is fantastic. And also comment down below. You know what wedges do you play? Have you ever tried these? Would you try these? For example, what do you think of the rusted face? You know, I personally, I love it. I love to see that rust looking down. You know, it stops glare as well. And I just, I really do. And so, yeah, let me know. And look out for a new What's in the Bag coming shortly. Or, in this case, if you're watching this in a week's time, find What's that, what's in the Bag for my new one on the channel right now. All right then, cheers. And I'll uh, speak to you guys soon.